Welcome back folks. In this lesson of CompTIA Network Plus, we'll be talking about Ethernet standards. So first of all, for the folks who don't know this yet, Ethernet is a family of wired computer networking technologies. So what we're saying here is it's not necessarily limited to normal network cable. Some of you might notice as LAN cable, basically the cable you would go and plug into your normal RJ45 port on your computer. So that network cable you would plug into your desktop or laptop, that's a normal RJ45 network cable. So when I say Ethernet standards or just an IT in general, when people say Ethernet standards, it's actually pretty much going to include all the networking types of cables you get. It's, for example, going to include the good old-fashioned coaxial cable, which we no longer actually use. It's going to include CAT cables, category cables. So CAT3, CAT5, CAT6, that kinds of stuff. Those ones you might be familiar with. And it is going to include fiber cables. So coaxial, CAT cables, fiber cables, all of these form part of Ethernet standards. So when I say Ethernet, I'm not necessarily talking about normal LAN cables. I'm in fact also talking about coaxial and fiber. So with that in mind, we can safely say that Ethernet is the most widely and most commonly used networking technology pretty much anywhere where you have a network that is connected via some sort of cable. Guess what? You have Ethernet there. It's mind-boggling once you realize how much and in how many places we actually use and make use of Ethernet without us even realizing. It's literally almost everywhere, including in your own home. Scary stuff, eh? So, like we said earlier, Ethernet consists of different cables. Since Ethernet consists of different cables, we can then also safely say that these cables come with different connectors. They are not just limited to the common RJ45, some of you might be familiar with. Each cable type also comes with its own benefits and drawbacks. Each cable has a different speed. Some are slow, some are fast, some are smack back in the middle. Each cable type also has a maximum distance it can go before the signal on that cable needs a little bit of a boost, before it needs to be repeated. Basically, basically a repeater of some kind will be required. A switch, a repeater, a router, more on that once we get to it. All right, folks, now that we know Ethernet is not a specific cable type, I think we can jump deeper into this and cover some of the various kinds of Ethernet cable we actually get. Please take note that Ethernet cables is very extensively covered in the official CompTIA Network Plus exam. So you really need to know this stuff if you intend on taking the official exam. Um, you need to know the different kinds of cables you get, the maximum distances, their maximum speeds, and what situations you would need, uh, need to go and use them or would go and use them. The benefits, the drawbacks, you know, so for example, which ones are keen to have interference on them, which ones are immune to interference, what kinds of cable connectors you would use in them, all of that is stuff you need to basically know off by heart if you intend on writing this exam. So yeah, guys, please take note. Now, before we start with our first cable type, if you haven't done so already, do me a favor and hit that like button, you know you wanna. And then also, if you enjoy the content and if you'd like to know when more lessons goes live, maybe when I make a new course, remember to also subscribe, folks. Otherwise, you might miss it. Okay, then, let's start with the first Ethernet standard. First up, we have the 10 base T. This is a very old Ethernet standard. It has many other names, too, besides the 10 base T we just mentioned. It's also commonly known as CAT free cable. The cat in the name is short for category. So when I say cat free, I actually mean category free cable. Believe it or not, this is basically your good old fashioned telephone cable. The telephone lines you plug into your phone is a cat free cable. Some folks also know these as POTS lines, P-O-T-S lines. The POTS is of course short for plain old telephone system. Now, yes, 10 base T could also be over a CAT5 cable, or should I say category 5 cable, 
That's a normal LAN cable, in case you guys don't know. And that normal LAN cable is something you would plug into your desktop or laptop. It was possible to do this in the 90s, and that's pretty much the only time we actually used this was in the 90s. But whether you use the Cat3 or Cat5 cable, either way, potato, potato, it would limit you to the 10 megabytes per second speed limit. So there was a 10 megabytes per second speed limit. So irrespective of whether you decided to use Cat3, which is the phone cable, or Cat5, which was the computer cable, you would have that limit. The only real difference back then was, besides the cables, of course, was the connectors. If you wanted to go and connect your computers to one another, you would probably go and use a Category 5 or Cat5 cable, which comes with the RJ45 connector. That's the connector that would plug into your laptop or desktop. If you wanted to go and connect your phones, you'd probably go and use the good old-fashioned Category 3 cable, so in other words, phone cable, that comes with the good old-fashioned RJ11 connector. That's the one you'd plug into the back or the bottom of your phone. At the moment, you'll only find Cat3 cables when it comes to 10 base T, not the Cat5. And the only place you might find these is an old telephone lines, landlines in other words. These cables generally have two pairs of wires. I'm saying generally because that's what a book will tell you. But realistically, in some cases, you'll actually just find two or three wires, not two whole pairs, which would obviously be four wires. So the books will tell you, hey, it's four wires, in other words, two pairs, you know, of two wires each. But realistically, if you go out there in the real world, you might actually encounter companies that's got the same cable, you know, physically the housing looks the same, connector looks the same, but if you, if you were to go and cut it open, you might actually just find three or two wires in there. It obviously depends on that company's setup, their phone setup to be more precise. The maximum distance these cables can go, which is the same for pretty much a lot of network cables, is 100 meters. The maximum speed they go is about 10 megabits per second, like I said earlier, which is actually considered fast in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I know, that was fast back then. It's scary how far we've come and how fast things are now compared to just a few decades ago. The connectors these cables use is usually an RJ11, not just the RJ45s, but they can also possibly come with an RJ24, believe it or not. Realistically, you're probably only going to find these cables with an RJ11, especially if we're talking about a Cat3. And if we're talking about 10 base T in general, I don't think you're going to find a Cat5 with an RJ45 with that kind of specs. It's, it's very unlikely. Now, before we proceed to the next Ethernet standard, I would like to point out something very important to you folks. The information I just listed above and that I'm about to list for you guys with the other standards that's coming up is what you'll find in the official course manuals. And it is what they're going to ask you about in the official CompTIA Network Plus exam. However, the information is actually in reality not entirely accurate. Some of it is just completely wrong. Some of it is just, well, not accurate. For example, I mentioned that this Cat3 cable can go up to 100 meters, which is the case for a lot of network cables. You'll see this distance is listed for a lot of network cables. And the fact of the matter is, you're probably never going to get that distance out of these cables, whether we're talking Cat3, Cat5, Potato, Potato. The fact of the matter is you're not going to get 100 meters out of these cables in real life. You'll be lucky if you can get up to 90 meters out of these network cables in real life that's rated for 100 meters. On average, you'll get about 70, 80, 85 meters realistically. On a good day, you'll get 90. On a really, really, really good day, if you're super duper lucky, you might get 95, but that's a fairy tale. 100 meters, that doesn't exist. That's what the manual says. That's what any slideshows will say. That's what the courses will say. That's what the exam will test you on. But in real life, that is not the case, folks. That's the difference between book knowledge or theory versus the real world. The exam is not really based on real world stuff. Instead, the exam is based purely on what you'll find in my presentation and in the manuals. I will, however, point out in all of my videos, if I see a topic that I know to not be true in the real world, I will tell you what needs to be told, you know, from an exam perspective and from a course perspective, 
and then I will tell you what it's actually like in the real world. For example, that distance thing I just mentioned. In the real world, it's not 100 meters. If I see something like that again in the course, this video or any other video, I will point it out for you guys so you at least know what it's like in the real world as well once you actually go out in the field. All right then, on that bombshell, I think we can now safely move on to the next Ethernet standard, finally. Next up, we have 100 base TX. This one is 10 times faster than the previous 10 base T we spoke of. It has a speed of up to 100 megabits per second. It makes use of a CAT5 cable, which obviously stands for category 5. The 100 base TX is also known as fast Ethernet because of how much faster it is compared to the example we used previously, which was 10 base T. Funny thing is though, this is probably one of the slowest connections you'll actually get today. And um, yeah, I suppose it's probably got to do with the fact that back then, back in time, this was one of the fastest connections at that point in time. And where we stand now, there's obviously much, much faster connections out there, much faster standards. So they probably didn't really think it through at that time when they gave it the name of Fast Ethernet. The maximum distance for the 100 base TX is 100 meters, like you would expect with most of these standards. Uh, like I said before, the 100 meters is only mentioned because that's what's in most manuals and that's what they will ask you in the exam. But in real life, that's going to be different. In real life, you'll be lucky if you can get up to 100 meters. Realistically speaking, you're probably never going to get 100 meters, only about 80, 90 meters. So every time I say 100 meters, that's only I'm only saying that because of the exam, because the manual says so, but realistically you can expect about 80, 90 meters. Another Ethernet standard on our list is the 1000 base T. With this standard, we drastically improved on the 100 base TX in multiple aspects. The speed of the standard is, for instance, up to 1000 megabits per second now, or should I say one gigabit per second. Instead of CAT5 cable, with this standard, we make use of CAT5 E cable. You're not really going to be able to find CAT5 cable, quite frankly. Um, not anywhere, actually. The only place you might find that kind of cable is in someone's garage that they maybe stored many, many moons ago. So we're mentioning it, but the reality is you're probably not going to be able to get your hands on CAT5 cable. Only CAT5 E and better. The 1000 base TX standard makes use of all four pairs of wires inside the cable. So that would obviously be all eight wires. The maximum distance it can go is the same as the previous ones, which is the usual 100 meters. Please remember that, that maximum distance for the exam is very important. It's worth noting that if a network is or was still using 100 megabyte setup, and they decide to use these cables, which will go up to 1000 megabytes per second or one gigabit per second, they will most likely have to go and change, well, pretty much guaranteed have to go and change the equipment associated as well. So that will be things like your network switches. So it doesn't help you go and improve the cables to 10 times faster the speed, but you decide to keep the switches on the 100 megabyte switches. Instead, now what's gonna happen is you're gonna throttle that network down to 100 megabits again. So if you want to get that full speed, you need to go and change the equipment as well, folks. At the moment, the 1000 base T standard is one of the most commonly used standards by most companies at present. Obviously, this is going to change as time goes by. So as things improve and as time goes by, people will go and use better and faster standards. And obviously, in turn, they'll also go and change the equipment once again. Every five to 10 years, companies will go and improve and move to something faster. And then, yeah, like I said earlier, they will normally go and change the equipment along with that as well. Here we have the 10 GB base T standard. This standard is once again 10 times faster again compared to the previous standard, which was the 1000 base T. So this standard can go up to speeds of, you've guessed it, 10 gigabits per second. It kind of says it in the name, doesn't it? Not a lot of companies are using this standard yet i think that's the key word here is yet but very quickly this is starting to become the new standard or the no the new norm as i should say for companies 
So this is the one companies are currently in the process of moving to, I would say. This standard runs at a much higher frequency than the other gigabit standards. It runs at a whopping 500 megahertz instead of 125 megahertz like some of the other gigahertz. This translates obviously into a heck of a lot of more speed. That's one of the ways it gets that speed is because of the megahertz it runs at. The 10 base T standard makes use of CAT6 and CAT6A cable instead of the previous CAT5 and CAT5E we mentioned earlier. The maximum distance the 10 GB base standard can go is not necessarily the 100 meters like we've been saying the whole time. It actually instead depends on the cable you use. So if you are, for example, using CAT6, but the cable is unshielded, in other words, UTP, which stands for unshielded twisted pair, you can expect a distance of up to 55 meters, probably less, you know, because we know that's the book. Um, if you are using CAT6, but the cable is, in fact, shielded, so that would be STP, you can expect the usual 100 meters. So realistically, that would be about 80, 90 meters. You will, however, notice that nobody is actually using CAT6 because it sucks. Instead, people are using CAT6A. And if you're using CAT6A, you can get 100 meters in distance regardless of whether you're using unshielded or shielded cable. You can go and use either or, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, and you will get up to 100 meters. Now, next up, we've got the 40 GB base T standard. At this point in time, this standard is more likely like a, like a fairy tale. I suppose you can call this a unicorn. It's out there, but nobody's actually seen it. So you should probably consider yourself very, very lucky if you've seen this. You're probably working at a company that's very cool if you've seen this or if you're using this. But realistically, I don't think you're going to see this anytime soon. Doesn't mean we're not using it, it's just at this point in time, it's too advanced. And most companies probably won't be using this anytime soon. It's probably, probably going to take most companies like 10 or 15 years before they actually properly start using the 40 GB base T standard. Now, you can probably guess the speed of this bad boy by looking at its name. So earlier we said 10 GB base was 10 gigabits per second. And since this one says 40 in the name, can you guess the speed? Yep, 40 gigabits per second. That's just insane. The 40 G base T standard only works with cat 8 cable category 8 yep i'm serious the maximum distance you can expect to get out of this standard is about 30 meters they say so that would mean it's obviously probably going to be a heck of a lot less than 30 meters we know how this works here we have an ethernet standard that is actually a fiber wire the 100 base FX standard is one of the slowest ones. I wouldn't say it is the slowest one, but it's one of the slowest fiber standards that we're going to have. And you can, of course, extend on the speeds and distances that we've been mentioning up until now. In most cases of fiber standards, the speed will generally be higher and the distance will be a lot further and greater than what we've been discussing up until now. With the 100 base FX standard being one of the slowest one out of the lot, it uses multi-mode fiber. It also commonly uses lasers. That's very important to note. Make a note of that. It uses lasers to send light through the cable. And um, by the way, that reminds me, you should never look directly down the tip of these fiber connectors since those lasers can obviously damage your eyes. Instead of you're curious or if you need to go and troubleshoot, rather look at the connector from an angle or hold the connector near something like the palm of your hand and just check if there's a little red light, you know, shining against the palm of your hand. It's not going to hurt you. Just check it out like that. The speed of this standard, you might have figured out already because of its name. It kind of says it in the name. Its speeds is 100 megabits per second. Now, as for the maximum distance of this specific standard, it will depend on whether you're using half duplex or full duplex. If you're using half duplex, you can expect the distance of up to 400 meters. That's already a heck of a lot more than what we said earlier. If you're using full duplex, you can expect a distance of up to 2 kilometers. That's a lot. That's a heck of a lot, actually. Here we have another standard, which is also fiber. It's very, very much the same as the previous one. 
at least name wise it is. This one is SX and the previous one was called FX. Other than that, the name is pretty much identical. This X version is basically a cheaper version and a knockoff, if you will, of the previous version that we just discussed. It goes without saying that if something is cheaper, it's probably going to have some sort of drawback to it. There's bound to be something. There's always some sort of catch if something is cheaper. Speed-wise, the SX version is surprisingly the same as the previous version. So it's not the speed that's the issue here. Now, as for the light that goes through the cable, with the previous version, we spoke of laser, and that's what a lot of fiber cables actually use. However, with the SX version, the light is not a laser. Instead, it makes use of LED optics, which is a heck of a lot cheaper. Now, that LED optics they tend to go and use has some drawbacks, and that's where the catch starts here. The drawback here, one of the main ones, is the maximum distance. Instead of the 400 meters or the 2 kilometers we spoke of earlier, the maximum distance you can expect out of this SX version is about 300 meters. All right, folks, and here we have another Ethernet standard. And by looking at its name, you can probably guess its speed. Gigabit per second. Yep, that's right. So this is the second last one we're going to be discussing, which is also fiber, of course. And then the last one is also fiber. They're very much the same, the second last one and the last one. Now this one, which is SX at the end, the next one's going to be LX. The SX one, which is what the one we've been discussing right now, has a short wave laser, very important in just a moment. But like the name obviously says, it's not going to go exactly very far. If you have a long wave laser, the distance is obviously going to go a lot further. So if there's one having a short wave laser, you can normally expect a distance of up to about 220 to about approximately 500 feet, 50 meters. It's not set in stone, it's approximate, like I said. It also depends on a whole bunch of other variables. Obviously, the fire cable itself that you're using also has an influence on the actual distance that you're going to get in the end of the day. Now, looking at this next one being the last one, this is the LX one. Very much the same as the previous one we spoke. So speed-wise, you can also expect the same speed, 1 gigabit per second. However, this one, unlike the previous one, uses long wave laser. So that now obviously means the distance you're going to get is going to be a lot further. The previous one, which we had a short wave laser, we had a distance of up to 220 to 550 meters. With this one, well, it's going to be probably 550 at a minimum. At the end of the day, it's going to depend whether you're using multi-mode fiber or single-mode fiber. Multi-mode fiber generally tends to be a much shorter distance compared to single-mode. So if you're using multi-mode fiber, which is the shorter one, you can expect of about a 550 meters. If you're using single mode, which is normally much greater distances, that you can expect a distance of up to 5 kilometers. In case you're wondering about multi-mode and single mode, multi-mode is usually, in most cases, something you'll use indoors, in like a server room environment. Single mode is usually something you'll use outdoors, over great distances. It's not set in stone, but that's generally how we tend to go and do it. Right, folks, hopefully you have learned something about Ethernet standards. A lot of folks actually tend to think that Ethernet standards is limited to LAN cables, like I said in the beginning. The fact of the matter is it can also be coaxial cables and it can also be fiber cables. And the standards I've mentioned for you folks is actually, believe it or not, not all of them. I just mentioned the most well-known ones and the most common ones that you actually need to know from an exam's perspective and from the course's perspective. If you've learned something, do me a favor, give the video a like. It does promote the video a little bit. It helps help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you, of course, would like to know when the next Network Plus lesson comes out, remember to subscribe. Lastly, folks, a special thank you and shout out to the sponsors of this channel. Patreon sponsors, PayPal sponsors. I see I've got a new Patreon sponsor by the name of Matt. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Patreon ship, guys. And guys, I will see you on the next lesson of Network Plus, being lesson 17.